to the websites. Here I meet the hat. My sneak up here for a Hello, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, happy Mary. New sign language. This is sort of like a personal diary that I think I will share on the websites because the topic is a serious one. Uh, throughout my life, I have met a lot of shady characters, but I don't think everyone's shady, obviously. That's why my f that's why I have about three hundred friends at the moment, not Facebook. Uh, um, and then more in person. Um, but um, the time came for uh, what those who have always been uh, close and entrusted friends would pause for a minute and um, think about if I were to use the expression uh, my attack um, by that I mean uh, an attack on me of sorts and uh, <clears throat> yeah not everyone listened but um, a couple of a couple of very trusted friends certainly did so um, and more friends would have if they had been around but uh, it's very important for me to say this at this point in time uh, because I don't think anyone has really thought of me coming out and naming um, uh, a truly dangerous or um, you know more than one uh, of a very type of dangerous person <clears throat> and people before but I would name uh, the two, these two uh, Freemasons that opened the Capital Chemist franchise, uh, Gary Cans and Roger Tall, and 
I left the church and quit being a Christian and um, that is not because of the issues I had with the man who owned and ran the youth group. Uh, there's always the side story about how I confront him with questions and he uh, preferred to call me satanic at the time. But that had nothing to do with whether or not Christianity was true, and so I knew that in my teens, uh, when I left, but I had figured, well, if, if this one representative of Christianity can't even sit down and hold his own in a, you know, rudimentary, less than one minute conversation about why his principles were even true, or his religion was true, and he couldn't. So I left and I didn't just leave, I left and I deconverted. Uh, you know, the thing with atheism to right to this day is that um, and this is an issue that I want to weigh in on in my own book because this is I'm talking back now to when I was like fucking 14 <laughs> uh 14 or 15 but um with atheists there is an ongoing uh debate and dispute about like you might be well into the ideas of certain unbelievers but then uh you might also at the same time not want to say publicly or have it made a matter of public knowledge that you're an atheist and that's because of largely um uh it's because of group think theory whereby a person says well uh this guy's an atheist so he'll be thinking like duh, 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 duh. and then they start to refer to like, they pull uh, statements from Sam Harris or uh, Christopher Hitchens or Richard Dawkins or Daniel Dennett or George Smith or... Um, and George Smith is brilliant. Like, any of you find uh, Atheism, The Case Against God by George Smith, right away he says in the book itself it should not be have been called The Case Against God but The Case Against Belief in God. And uh, he talks about how... An atheist, um, it, uh, the, the the definition of atheism comes from um, the application of the prefix letter A before the suffix. So, R, R, theism. And now, uh, theism is the belief in the existence of a god or gods. So, you have um, polytheism, which is the belief in uh, more than one god. You have all these other kinds of theism. Um, the word theos it traces, I think, etymologically back to refers to the gods. And so with words like uh, atypical, Luke, you don't typically wear your makeup this way. That would be um, one way you could use the word atypical. The the word the, the the prefix a means without and the suffix typical so without type uh your luke you're behaving atypically today that just means your behavior is lacking without the the, the typology that uh this bunch of people uh, is used to or you have um a asexual like uh, asexual plant reproduction so in that case uh the prefix a and the suffix sexual would be without sexuality so not as opposed to against because what um or uh yeah what like religious people like to say is you know you're not religious because you hate god uh and that really misses the point because if a god really existed uh and we could not deny that then we would even suffer and struggle uh in our relevant circumstances um 
because we wouldn't be able to deny that um, that a god or gods existed. So um, it's sort of offensive when religious people talk that way because that's how, what's what they try to say if they try to negotiate you into a religious conversion is they try to say, well, God has done so much for you. You know, he he sacrificed Jesus for you. He he had you. He had the whole species um, spawned from a single relationship between Adam and Eve in the garden, and their children had to, you know, they had to fuck each other and in, to, um, and impregnate each other, um, or fuck Eve and impregnate her after Adam had already dicked and impregnated her and given birth to the first little bunch of fucking squabblers that had to then go back and fuck their mother. Because there was no one else to fucking have kids with. And he did all this for you. <clears throat> you can see why uh, the Antichrist has already come. But anyway. Um, so that, then they'll say, well, why are you against a God that loves you so much? And um, that's, again, not the point. It means without... So they can't turn to these plants and, and accuse them and take them to court and say, well... You're against sexuality, plant. Um, you hate sex, plant. Otherwise, you would use sex to reproduce. And the plant goes... You know, it, um, it doesn't work that way. So the prefix A just means without or lacking or the absence of the suffix. Um, so A, typical, without type, A, sexual, without sex. Um, and so atheism means without theism, and theism is the belief in the existence of God or gods, as you will already find. <clears throat> so, atheism therefore just means the lack of theism, or the absence of theism. Uh, you often hear about this talk of um, uh, agnosticism as being about... Um, uh, well, if you're not sure, you're an agnostic. If you're not sure yet, and the girl in church hasn't jerked you off to help get you in, um, agnostic is when you're sitting on the fence. On the fence. <clears throat> uh, and that again is also, and, and that's why I would recommend this George Smith book. Uh, I'd love to meet George Smith. He's quite old now. But he's someone I would genuinely thank because this definition that he argues for quite uh, relentlessly in his book, Atheism, The Case Against God, which then again, he, in the introduction, he says it should have been called The Case Against Belief in God. Uh, but he makes the best case I've ever read. And I've read a fuckload of books. I have hundreds and hundreds of books on atheism. Um, and I'll branch, I'll just talk for a second, a half a minute on agnosticism. Um, sorry. Oof. You gotta be careful with dichotomies. I hate them. And I really hate them because, uh, I've been told it's gotta be this or this. And there are times in life when it's one way or the other and you have to make a choice. So, but then there's also people taking dichotomies, um, and, and saying stupid shit and asking stupid questions. Um, and going like, well, there's only two colors, red or blue. And then it turned out the person who asked you that question got, uh, asked fucked by a policeman the night before. There's only two colors. Red. Um, so that's a false dichotomy if you're asked. It's a false either or. Like, you're either this or you're that. But George Smith argues in his book that essentially, at least the uh, imp strong implication I got from the book, was that therefore the whole world is essentially uh, comprised of either theists or atheists. And he argues we were all atheists from birth. Because atheism isn't, isn't it, it's not you having to uh, be able to say why God doesn't exist. Because obviously a baby couldn't do that. But a baby couldn't say why they were in, born in original sin. 
because Adam uh, fucked Eve and their kids fucked either Eve or each other. And that's why we have Oriental people and Chinese and Japanese people and black African people and Aboriginal people. Um, and for the amount of inbreeding, very few retards. Do Anyway, um, sorry, that's how Capital Chemist used to uh, get me to talk at the staff meetings. So, um, yeah, he says uh, the world is, 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 there's a philosophical divide where you're either a theist who will then assert and be able to try to argue for how and why they think or know or believe that one or more gods exist. And then the rest are atheists, and we were all born atheists. And so, like, I've been shy a bit, a bit about... I haven't really been shy so much, because I've done so much debating. I've done enough debating to write more than one book myself. On that topic alone. But, um... Uh... It's, yeah, it's because of this ongoing stringent thing that there is about uh, atheism not... We, we don't want it to be ever be viewed as a movement that could ever be compared to a religious movement. Um, we don't want atheism to be a category on, like, uh, a government's, uh, what are they called? The annual, uh, you know, you fill out the form. What's your religious position? We don't want atheism to be a category in that. The census. The census. Um, so, uh, and, uh, it's not, it's not that it's too new. Uh, religion is, is too old and has been. But, um, what atheism once studied can do for helping to reinforce, first and foremost, the concept of the individual. Um, and the individual's rights and responsibilities to themselves and to their own thinking, uh, and then to their family, friends, society, state, etc. It all it all moves out from the concept of the original, uh, and since that's where it starts, there's got to be some sort of carefulness about. Um, how godlessness is formally viewed by a, a state, I think, because it's not right to say like they could say, "Oh, Luke, you belong. You're a you're an atheist." So here's this statement from Sam Harris, who thinks that murderers are all uh, the result of bad genes. Uh, we've looked up your childhood. Your genes must certainly be bad. <laughs> So, why don't you, as an atheist, um, anyway, and you can see where that line of, of, of thinking and questioning goes. So, one atheist does not have to agree with another atheist on every given point, and that's why it's going to always be hard, uh, if not impossible, I think, to ever formally declare godlessness or atheism as uh, a category of religiousness or uh, on any sort of uh, government census form. It's not just me and my fuck up childhood, it's um... It's um... It is the principle. And I was talking to a friend earlier this morning, Gus, who uh, I've included his... my interview with him, uh, which was his thoughts on Stoicism. One impressive thing about ancient Greek culture is that they... 2,000 years ago, which is the most that you will hear Christians say um, about how proud they are of their Bible and their scriptures because they came from these scrolls that were assembled uh, 2,000 years ago. And I will say that at the outstretch. Hey, this was... I'm not going to name these girls because they're shy and now they're very womanly. But on my 21st, that was my present for my 21st. 
This is a uh, that's Hydrosaurus. Wherever she is right now, I'm sure she's kicking her ass. But anyway, back to the subject. The I'll, I'll talk about the Greeks and then agnosticism, and then um, we'll go from there. But uh, <coughs> is Baptist. Best Baptist on Earth. The last Baptist on Earth. Uh, so, these ancient Greeks had, like, Epicurus, uh, uh, I think there's a series of statements from one ancient Greek where they say, is God willing to prevent evil, but not able, uh, then he is impotent, as a challenge to the statement from religious people that God is omnipotent, omnipotent, uh, all potency and can do anything, all power, as the, the Christians will sing in the church, all power to create you from in breeding in a garden. Um, yeah, so is God, um, willing to prevent evil, but not able, then he is impotent. Is he able to prevent evil, but not willing, then he is malevolent. Is God both able and willing to prevent evil, uh, then whence cometh evil, is the original writing, but that just means why, well, what the fuck is there so much evil for? Uh, is he neither able nor willing to prevent evil? Then why call him God? Uh. <sighs> and anyway, so the ancient Greeks had worked that out about 2000, two millennia ago. Uh, I think a lot about sometimes, and in, in recent months, I've spent time thinking about what empowered white people to uh, spot this continent and then not only spot it but decide we want it to be our future home oh there's all these niggas oh, there's all these black people here and they're playing music with their mouths uh, they're playing this strange music blowing into these like uh, didgeridoo and then they just go, well, I just wonder what they stood for. People have often, uh, well, a few, occasionally I've had people dissing me about um, what they call piracy. And uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm not a monarchist. You, you can even check the records from... Um, uh, you know, you can run a check on me and my behaviors, you know. Why does it blow all this money every weekend? It's like, well, if you put Jenna Jamison on the $5 bill and the back of all the coins, holding up her middle finger and showing her pussy to, um, um, you know, she had like, she had like a silver embossed vagina on the, on the back of the coins. Probably I would have more savings by now. But instead, there's this uh, inbred looking daft 50 plus country invading Rolf Harris pedophile breeding fucking Charles, don't fuck Diana, fuck Camilla. She's a bit more like me. You don't fuck Diana, fuck Camilla. Camilla. I won't hoist a flag when Diana is found dead in the car crash. Dumb bitch, don't give a knighthood to Bowie, he'll fucking tell you to fuck off. He already sang, sung about you fucking off in the fucking 70s. Queen Elizabeth the Second. And, you know, some sort of honor from her is is pretty much the dream of, uh, of my former employer that gave me the death threat, Roger Tall. He would love to get some sort of recognition for his company from her. I think he should go further and do what um, Charles might have done if he, if he had the chance to uh, fulfill his 
mother's religious dream about the garden. And then Roger Toll can uh, step in and say, look, I'm not related to Charles by blood. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of incest in my history too, Biarch, but that's what will bring us together at the heart. And then Roger Toll uh, can drop two 50 or 100 mil milligram Viagra. Uh, Tadafinil. Oh, wait, is that Cialis? Sildafinil. Sildafinil. Sounds like daffodils. He'll probably bring her flowers too. And then Roger Tall can um, try and penetrate Her Majesty. And no, I think that's what he wants. But anyway, uh, agnosticism. <clears throat> so yeah, these words, when you come across them and there's an A followed by a suffix. The suffix is like the rest of the word, or the latter part of the word. Um, gnosis, the word gnosis begins with G-G-N, and the Gnostics were a sect of Christians who had this, uh, you know, now there are denominations, you have uniting churches, and you have um, Anglican churches, and you have um, Cap Catholics, and you, have, you know, all these denominations. But centuries before that, there were just uh, particular offshoot movements from uh, the Christian poison. <laughs> Luke's, Luke uh, recites Hitler. <laughs> I'm not pooping on anyone yet, though. Uh, I am not playing with my poop. Um, my poop goes. I'll show you because I have some coins. Because uh, in my bathroom, I do enjoy um, having the embossed. Queen. It's it's actually to help me save money as well, but uh, there's a bunch of coins in the base of the toilet bowl, so that when I shit and piss, I can not think of Queen Elizabeth, because I would die for Queen and country pirated from the Aberdeen. But how many Aborigines do you see in modelling? <laughs> no, I'm on their side, I suppose. Uh, not because I just want to keep pirating, but because uh, I'm not too into um, historical pride. Uh, yeah, it's never been my thing. Anyway. Uh, so the Gnostics were a sect of Christians who had who claimed that t that it was possible to have uh, complete knowledge and perfect knowledge that not only that the Christian God existed but that the Christian religion was true. They thought they had certain knowledge. They weren't claiming to be sitting on a fence of not yet having decided whether they were to say that they would believe in God or not. Uh, they were well past that point, and they were saying, no, we can know these things for certain. And it wasn't just belief in God that they were saying you could know for certain, it was a bunch of other things too. So then there was a man called Thomas Henry Huxley, and he said that um, absolutely he could not agree with them, the Gnostics, and he, he felt that he identified with the concept of being uh, like the diametric opposite to the Gnostic sect. So he took the prefix A and applied it to Gnostic uh, or Gnosis, you know, diagnosis. Um, that's that same suffix. Uh, uh, so he made the word agnostic, which meant without certainty. Just like without theism is atheism and without sexual is a uh, plants fucking or plants having other plants. Um, and it meant, it didn't mean, I'm not sure yet if I believe or not. It meant we cannot know. So, in fact, you could be a theist and still be an agnostic as well. You could say, well, uh, you could say, um, <clears throat> well, we can never know. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible to know if a god or gods exist. 
but I choose um, to believe anyway. And that would be the, an example of the basic credo of an agnostic theist. And then you could also be an agnostic atheist and say, well, we can never know if a god or god. Uh, and. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so with um, eccentricity and eccentrics, I will say I was lucky enough. For, uh, I feel fortunate in the, in the regard that I did grow up aware of um, to some extent the mind of, of eccentric of eccentrics and that did start in Canberra for me with uh, a man named Yahoo Sirius you will find if you look up his filmography that he also made uh, two other films Reckless Kelly and and since we can never know if a god or gods exist uh, I've thought about it and I've decided that I, I, I still don't believe and that would be an agnostic atheist so that's the argument. That's sort of the argument framework of George Smith's book. He he, uh, his logistics imply that as far as God belief goes, the population of the whole Earth can be dichotomized into either theists or atheists. That also means that all that any atheist ever has in common with another atheist. It, it's not what uh, they stand for that they have in common. It's what they have chosen not to stand for, which means they've chosen not to stand for theism, which is belief in the existence of God or God. So what they have in common with one another is not, um, you're an atheist, so you must surely agree with the views of Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, Dan Dan and Richard Dawkins. It's um, what they have in common is something they lack. And not something they lack because they want it and haven't got it yet and they're searching for it. it doesn't necessarily mean that at all. Uh, it just means what they have in common is an absence, not um, a positive stance. And that's why, and this is where I would defer to um, another writer called Michael Martin, who wrote a massive fuck off book called Atheism, a Philosophical Justification. Um, and it's divided into two categories, negative atheism and then positive atheism. So under his definition, everyone was born a, a negative atheist. Um, you know, uh, a positive atheist is a person who understands how to affect arguments to the effect that no gods exist. Um, that's positive atheism. Negative atheism is you've got Christians, you've got Muslims, you've got uh, Freemasons, you've got um, Hindus, you've got all these other, uh, you've got um, Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons uh, trying to tell you that God loves you and God exists. And so you hear out their arguments and then you challenge them and you respond and they don't know how to respond back. So you didn't mean you may not even mean to falsify them, but essentially they lobby they just lobby arguments at you for why you should believe, and um, yeah, you stop them. But you, uh, whether you intend to stop them or not is uh, something I can't tell. But um, that's all negative atheism is. Negative atheism is looking into why uh, churches win conversions and what sort of things they say to try to win conversions. Um, and then positive atheism is like you essentially are prepared now to face a religious uh, debate opponent and argue to them why their God doesn't exist. And that's called positive atheism. And that is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, the, I've heard, of, I, I've had people go, oh, so if you're a negative atheist, were you like, Sexually, uh, like negative means, you know, I'm so down. <laughs> Someone tell the queen I'm so down. Um, 
it's not negative and positive in the sense of uh, mood swings. It's negative and positive in the sense of a fucking battery. To you, from Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne in the Matrix meeting. So, uh, positive atheism isn't about making the world pretty either. It's about um, how certain people know why gods don't exist and they know arguments to prove and demonstrate their fortitude in being able to explain why gods and the supernatural, why the supernatural is bullshit and why no gods exist. And that's positive atheism. So this guy, Michael Martin, makes this book called Atheism, a Philosophical Justification, and it's divided into those two categories, negative and positive atheism. And it's a mindfuck of a book. Like, I spent months just honing on it because certain arguments were even expressed in the form... A, a lot of arguments are expressed in the form of algebraic uh, equations. If you can remember doing algebra in math class in high school or college, it's a bit like that. Uh, because he evaluates pretty much every formulaic argument that theists will lay down, um, like the creation argument, um, the we couldn't have morals unless there was a god argument, um, what do you think? Uh, anyway, there are fucking heaps. And, and yeah, I miss, I miss having a paperback version of the book because it was very dense. Um, so yeah, negative atheism is you just, uh, essentially saying, well, they tried these sorts of arguments and conversations and I just said this back and you explain why their approach to you is full of shit. Uh, that's negative atheism. So you say at the end of the argument, you're always going to say, well, your argument didn't work. Thus, I remain an atheist. Not, uh, yeah, not I became anything more because I, I let this Christian try to convert me. Um, yeah, negative atheism is, is, is not about uh, saying anything idealistic or um, having anything to assert even. It's just the absence of theism and then what people are trying to do to destroy the absence of theism. Uh, positive atheism is you being in, informed enough to know how to destroy the religion of another. And, well, or potentially. Like, uh, so I would not recommend, what can I say about positive atheism? I would say Unless the person you're talking to has not said to you, um, I love philosophy discussions and I love being challenged and I love being tested and contested and debated uh, and I've gone and I've met with people from all these denominations. I really enjoy uh, philosophy discussions. Uh, unless they're talking like that, I wouldn't bother... Uh, I wouldn't bother wasting the arguments of a positive atheist on a religionist unless they're already saying, like, I don't care what you say. Um, they have to really invite you, I think. That's the, that's the sort of manner I have um, because the most I've really tried to, to aim to do is uh, make art that makes people think and question. And so, uh, in saying that, my goal or agenda has never been to change. Like, to go out and pick a religious person and say, well, I'm going to make this person my uh, next atheist or anything like that. They have to say to me, like, you know, uh, you're smart and I want you in my church. You would be so great in my church. They have to say something like that. So, uh, unless that happens, I don't even bother referring to what positive atheists have written uh, about or spoken about. Though I've studied them since my late teens. Um, yeah. I often, most of the time, and you'll find this goes on, but you have to be dealing with like a head honcho 
a, a, a really hardcore activist for a particular religious movement uh, in order to ever waver from just giving recourse to the defensive standbacks of the negative atheists' argumentative responses that have been documented already. Um, and you'll find those responses just, um, you know, um, they're more or less tailored to the most that religious people will try to say to you when their aspiration and goal is to try to convert you and interest you in their church or religion. Unlike me and my Baptist. So, um, but the Stoics, so this is why I will now roll back to the Stoics. Uh, so 2000 years ago, they had already decided to reject the gods altogether. And I wonder why, uh, and, and so I, uh, I brought up Stoicism uh, in an interview with a neighbor and friend of mine called Gus, because what impressed me about Stoic thinking and that's the thinking of the ancient Greeks was where you go, well, fuck, because a lot of religious people say, oh, without God, there'd be nothing left. Uh, we'd have nothing. And then you can always say, what? What? <laughs> Nothing but incest in the garden where Adam planted his seed into the first lady ever created by her heavenly father and her name was Eve cause she was taken from a rib and that's why everybody doesn't even focus on the incest question cause they're thankful about the rib thing and that's why they thought Marilyn took uh, take out his rib so he could suck his own dick, which I I spent a lot of time thinking about why that rumor became um, so prominent, and a lot of people that have aren't Marilyn Manson fans will he, will hear his name mentioned and go, oh, isn't he the guy that um, had a rib removed so he could suck his own dick? And he said in the interview as well, if that was true, I wouldn't be here now. And but I actually think there there were fans that started like a portrait of American family um, online defense of the principle of freedom of expression, which uh, it's a principle that I wrote about in college. And that first album, Portrait of American Family by Marilyn Manson, was influential in that decision and movies like uh, The People vs. Larry Flint. Um, we have in our rights charter here in Australia that expression is in the rights charter. And you have to ask, well, to what extent? But I think anyone responsible would say, well, if we're allowed expression because of the rights charter, then pretty much we wouldn't violate with our expression the rest of the right, anything or anything else in the rights charter. Um... But it's also tricky because the Rights Charter does talk about uh, people having the rights to believe. Another word I hate. Um, to believe as they choose. Uh, and this is the this is where I've spent a lot of time. Uh, you know, people that knew me in church in the nineties might think, "Fuck, he didn't just leave the church. He left the church and studied, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But, uh, that's why I have to work in a way where people that are interested in you come to you and not you campaigning at them because you don't need to. I don't have a totalitarian aspiration or any aspiration to obliterate religious belief altogether from the rights charter, but it would be nice, uh, it would be very nice if those who are subscribers to um, a religious belief system, uh, irrespective of what it was, were nonetheless um, in appreciation of their remaining rights on the rights charter. Um, right to life, right to health, right to equality before the law, all of them. Uh, if that was happening, 
then I wouldn't be as motivated or compelled as I am uh, to rebuke and um, criticize and argumentatively falsify the ideas that I'm capable of argumentatively falsifying and have argumentatively falsified. And so that means you've got me saying, well, atheism is not the solution. Uh, it's not uh, a group, even. We aren't even a group. Or we have in common. It's 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 like uh, if babies were born and every fifth baby had no belly button. And they just said, well, let's group all the babies with no belly button and put them together in these incubators. That's sort of all atheism is as far as group mentality goes. All we have in common, all, all, all one atheist has to have in common with another atheist is that they both don't have God beliefs. If they have God beliefs, they're theists. If they don't have God beliefs, they're atheists. Uh, yeah, so I'm against, though atheism does very well and, and intelligently compete against religious dogmas, uh, I don't think atheism should ever be viewed or categorized as a religious group. Uh, but yeah, I think there have to, there has to have been some religious religiosity in the minds of the white men who stole, uh, Australia from the Aborigines, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of that. I need, I probably need to read more books on this topic. It's like, uh, every Australia day. I'm the I'm the person who runs into I'm the idiot who runs into like uh I'm I'm happy and I'll see an Aboriginal somewhere and be like Happy Australia Day and I'm Fuck you Invasion Day And then I'll listen to their story about why it's Invasion Day and not Australia Day and then I'll be like, Yeah, fair point. Uh and so I think if you came to a continent and there were already people there and you still took the whole continent from them anyway. You had to have been thinking you were serving the will of some fucking god. Otherwise you'd be like, nah, this is, we should not be stealing this fucking continent. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are already people here. <laughs> and tell the queen it's, we're going... <laughs> you know. Uh, so those pioneers and first white men who settled and then conquered Australia. Conquered is not the right word to use. Savaged and raped and destroyed Australia. Uh, for, um, for Caucasian gains. Um, they had to have believed, uh, they, were, they had to have been religious and see the light and seeing is believing and you know, looking for a white god to thank them and tell them they're fucking awesome, they, they did the right thing. They had to have been thinking of that uh, in order to do, to do what was done to the um, original uh, heirs to this continent. Um, so for those of you who are obsessed with history, there's... Uh, there's there's something to think about, and so I'm just gonna say if anyone can anonymously, through their peers and network, of ninjas, approach me and me, greet me um, outside of this unit on the matter of the cocaine for this this nostril. <laughs> Nasal cyst going. <laughs> we need the cocaine for the cyst. <laughs> yeah, so, um. Uh, yeah, the movie Al uh, Young Einstein, that uh, was Yahoo Serious' first film, and I warmed up to him as a four year old kid. I thought he was brilliant. Uh, I can remember being still too young. When you're that age where you're carried by a grandparent or parent. I remember being taken to watch Young Einstein in a theatre. It's my actually, it's, I think it could be my even my earliest memory of a, seeing a film in a cinematic theatre. 
uh, was Young Einstein. I think you'll find it was made in 1988. Um, but I remember being glued to it. And I studied for a while the character of Yahoo Sirius. And he identified with uh, the term eccentric. Uh, and as the years passed, and I passed kindergarten, I always loved Young Einstein. And then the films that followed, which were Reckless Kelly and Mr. Accident. Mr. Accident, I think, was uh, more stunts. And I think he'd been too long in America. I, I used to say that to myself. I'm going to, I'm not, you're going to say, well, what fucking movie could you make back to me? Then you'll win that argument. But that doesn't mean I'll start believing in your God. Uh, but Yahoo Sirius is someone who I would love to meet in person, because if I could, I would say thank you to him. Um, uh, he, he, um, I've studied a lot of his interviews, and he does remind me a bit of, well, I'd say Marilyn reminded me of him, and brain-wise, uh, to a certain degree. It was, yeah, it was Yahoo <laughs> Sirius who, um, I even noticed that link because Yahoo and Sirius was his, is his, um, art, art name, actor's name, or director, or, um, yeah, main actor, director, producer, uh, Yahoo and Sirius, you know, it's like Yahoo is like the exclamation of when you're happy and then Sirius is like logic and reason and he had taken the two and mixed them together and so when I first heard of Marilyn Manson in the early 90s, uh, I had noticed a parallel between that sort of uh, extreme opposites together uh, as it is with Yahoo Sirius and there's Marilyn Manson and I got to meet Marilyn and got baptised. And so I spit on, I spit at um, unpredictable moments as part of my uh, baptismal uh, duties. Uh, anyway, so that has been uh, my presentation on atheism, agnosticism, theism, uh, and the queen. And what went on inside uh, Buckingham during that time with Diana, who should have, who would have been a better queen, um, I think, given the sort of work that she was interested in. Uh, anyway. Uh, so in closing, the yeah the shadiest characters I've ever met or known have been uh, these uh, two businessmen, Gary Cairns and Roger Tall. And I happened to learn a number of things throughout my career, and they even wanted me to join them on their cause, but they knew I had issues with Christian belief, uh, or God belief in general. And while I didn't weigh in and talk much on the topic of... Um, accepting me, though having rejected God belief. Um, they, and they had, well, at least one of them had disclosed themselves as a Freemason. Um, I paid attention to the way they thought they were training me and uh, cautioning me and, you know, uh, uh, correct me and put me in shape for work in their chemist franchise. Um... But then I worked out that the issues that they had about me were all boiled down to whether or not I would infringe another person's rights because of the influence of art on my mind. Despite my grades and qualifications in multimedia and art in high school and college, uh, as well as my philosophical convictions about individuality, they yet still had these concerns. So learning they were a pair of Freemasons, um, I now have books, e-books about Freemasonry, and I think it's fucking gay. Um, and you know, they're now they're trying to profile me as someone who is um, essentially brain damaged because of art. Uh, yeah, they're Freemasons who, you know, at the Capital Chemist conf uh, Conference in 
Ah, uh, yeah, the end to this is pretty much just me saying that two most dangerous minds I've ever come across thus far in life would be Gary Cairns and Roger Toll of the Capital Chemist franchise. And right now, if they were watching this, they'd be trying to say that I'm trying to think that this banana uh, with the penis shaft and, and head of one or the other. But they've been thinking of and talking to me in that esteem since I was about 16. So, if that like, was he like a pedophile type case came, quite line of questioning, uh, came to a stand, at, uh, um, like a court hearing stand, I would, there are certain things I would never want to be public, just because, if you can see yourself merely being victimized, uh, for the rest of your life, then, there are certain things you don't want to be public record. So it would be a private suit. Because they also don't want it to be public record that Capital Chemist isn't exactly uh, peachy clean. <sighs> so they are the two most dangerous men I've, I've met or known in Canberra. And uh, look up a man called Niels Borg and Victor Stenger. They're both dead now. Particle physics professor Victor Stenger is dead. Niels Borg is dead. But if you look up their works, imagine their works developed in the 90s or, or this gen for this generation's time. And there's this technology, but it's in the hands of small business chain owners who are also Freemasons. Uh, it impressed me that they hated Christianity. It did not impress me that they're theistic and right-wing full of shit. I think secrecy is a problem if you want to think of yourself as a part of a philosophical movement that cares about truthfulness, because if you do, You'll always peg your philosophical principles out into public view for debate and scrutiny. The Freemasons don't do that. So, uh... Yeah, we, uh... That's, that's an interesting thing about them. It's like that Simpsons episode with the stonecutters. Uh... But much more ruthless and, you know... Someone dies and the citizenry will say it was this or that. Uh, say they sacrificed themselves or uh, say that, you know, it just wasn't our medicines. Um, uh, anyway, I'm going to get too far into this now. I'm tired. I've had too many death threats. <laughs>